Today we're gonna discuss what questions a probate attorney like me will ask to probate an estate. Welcome to our channel where we discuss estate planning and probate topics with a little fun thrown in. Let's get started. And let me start by saying that a probate does not have to happen immediately after your loved one passes away. In 20 years of doing this, I have observed that when someone passes, the family members many times want to get things done immediately. And I think this is natural, and I think it's part of the grieving process. It is usually the person that's grieving the most that will be most adamant about getting things done right now. Believe me, I get it. We all must process our feelings. However, most of the time, I believe it is a huge mistake to immediately jump into a probate. There are just too many unknowns. Now, I will absolutely meet with a family immediately if they want to, but my advice to them is just to take a deep breath and to grieve. As attorneys, we need to gather a lot of information to begin a probate. And today, I'm going to go over the information and documents that I need to begin a probate. Some of the information is not going to be available for several days or even weeks. Death certificates come to mind immediately, as those require a doctor's signature, and those, because of that, can sometimes be, late, be delayed for several weeks. In my initial free consultation with probate clients, this is the information I need. The very first document I just mentioned, and that is the death certificate. When we file a petition for probate, a certified original copy of the death certificate must be attached to the petition. Next, we need to know if your loved one had a last will and testament, or did they have a revocable living trust? If they had a revocable living trust and they properly funded that trust, then most likely we will not need to probate. You can watch this video up here where we did a video on what happens when you have a will versus a trust versus nothing at all. But for this video, let's assume there is not a trust and we do need to probate the estate. If there is a last will and testament, then we will need to file the original last will with the petition for probate and the death certificate. These are all filed together to begin the probate process. Now, we will examine the last will and specifically determine if a personal representative is named in the document, what the distribution plan states, and most importantly, whether or not we believe it is a valid last will and testament. If a personal representative is named in the last will, then are they still alive? And if they are, are they willing to serve? If they are not willing or able to serve, then we need to determine if the last will named a contingency personal representative. Now, if there's not a last will, which happens a lot, then I wanna know if someone in the family is willing to serve in that capacity. And do all the other heirs agree to that person serving as a personal representative? When a family cannot agree on who will serve as a personal representative, that is usually a really good indication that the probate is going to be contentious and very expensive. The next question is whether the person intending to serve as a personal representative has ever been convicted of a felony. Under Oklahoma law, a convicted felon cannot serve as a personal representative. Next, we need to know who are the potential heirs and we will need their legal names, their mailing address, their phone number, and an email address for them. The reason for this is, one, we need to figure out who the heirs are, and two, we need to send statutory notices to the heirs. Not having this information will delay the process. Next, I need to have a list of all assets that are, are part of the estate. We need to know about every single piece of real estate and the legal descriptions for those pieces of real estate so that we can either sell the property during the probate or transfer it to the heirs at the end of the probate process. That brings up an important point, and that is whether the family intends to sell the real estate or do they wanna hold on to it. If the surviving heir is a husband or wife, then they will most likely want to hold on to their home because that's where they've lived their entire life. But it's important for me to know 
because it can determine how we proceed in certain situations. Also, if there's any mineral interests that we need to probate, are we going to split them up between all the heirs? Or does one heir want all of the mineral interests? That can make a huge decision, and we need to know that up front. If there's property out of state, then we will most likely need to contact an attorney in that state to probate that particular out of state property. We also need to know what checking, savings, and financial accounts that are in the estate. Usually, once the probate begins, we will open a probate bank account and we will consolidate all of the cash and assets into that one bank account for distribution at the end of the probate. While we're talking about bank accounts, we need to know right away if there is a safe deposit box. As you can imagine, that safe deposit box could contain a last will and we will need that to probate. Let me just say, and stop here, that if there is a safe deposit box, then the probate will basically be frozen until we determine the contents of that safe deposit box. Figuring out all the assets is extremely important because we will basically add up the value of all of them together. And if the total assets are over $200,000, then we must proceed with a regular probate. However, if the assets total under $200,000, then the family might have the option of proceeding with an expedited summary probate. Now, I have discussed the differences between regular and summary probates in this video up here. Next, we need, I need, a list of all the creditors. Now, although we will publish notice to creditors in the newspaper, by statute, we are required to give actual notice to known creditors. That means we send each creditor notice by certified mail. Finally, I just wanna know if the family is going to get along during this process. That is hugely important. A smooth probate keeps costs down and allows the probate to proceed at a normal time frame. However, if the family does not get along, then I can guarantee that the probate is gonna take longer and it'll get expensive really quickly. If you're getting value today, then can you please do me a huge favor and hit the like button below. And if this is your first time here, then please also hit the subscribe button so that you will get updated every time we post a new video. I would really appreciate it. Call us or download our strategies guys in the comment section below if you have any questions. We're here to help you every step of the way. Have a great day and as always, have an awesome week. Thanks for watching.